Hi, this is Letters from Japan. Today I'm going to be talking about getting a Japanese driver's license. Coming up next. Now, the requirements for getting your Japanese driver's license are different depending on one, whether you already have a driver's license in your home country, and two, if you do have a license, in what country was it issued. There are several countries where the conversion over to a Japanese license is pretty straightforward and you won't have to take any tests except an eye test. I'll put a full list down in the description, but for now just note that even though there are no practical tests, there is a little bit of red tape that you'll have to go through which I will get into in just a second. Now for most countries however, including the US, both the written and driving tests are required. However, as of last year, if you have a driver's license from the state of Maryland and you can prove at least three months of residency in that state, then you will be able to convert it over to a Japanese license without having to take either the written or the driving test. Now, whether you have to take the driving test or not, everyone will need to get their license translated into Japanese. To do this, you can either have it done at your embassy or consulate, or you can have it translated by JAF. That's the Japan Automobile Federation. For most people, JAF is the easier and cheaper option. I believe it cost me about 3,000 yen and took just about 30 minutes. You can also photocopy your license and mail it in. If you do this, however, just be aware that it could take up to two weeks, so do it only if you're not in a hurry. Also, I fully recommend that if you're there, you should pick up a copy of this book, Rules of the Road. Now, you probably won't need this for the written test because the written test is actually pretty easy. I'll talk about that in just a second. Instead, I suggest you get this just for your own benefit, like learning what the road signs mean, just practical information that every driver should know. Okay, once you have your license translated, you can go down to the local driver's license center. Now, before you head down there, make sure that you have an application form, your valid driver's license, your passport, a copy of your residence record, this is your Jumin Hyo, which you can get from your local city office, uh, the translation of your driver's license, uh, your resident card, two passport photos, and the application fee. Now, if you don't have to take the written or the driving test, you'll still need to take an eye test, wait through a few of the lines, uh, pay the fees, etc. But essentially, you're going to be pretty much done after a few hours of red tape. However, if you're from the U.S. or a country that requires a written and driving test, you should prepare for a minimum of two separate days. Now, on the first day, you'll take the written test. Now, the good news here is that the written test is pretty easy. You only need a 70% to pass, and to be honest, you don't really even need to study because if you can just use a bit of common sense when answering the questions, you should be good to go. Uh, one of the questions that sticks out in my mind was something like is a true false question and it said something like if you've only had one beer then it's okay to drive your car of course in japan the answer is always false now once you've passed the written test they'll schedule your driver's test now mine was one week later which was good for me because it gave me some time to practice but yours could be sooner or it could be later depending on how busy your local office is. Now the good news about the driving test is that you'll take it on their course. You don't have to drive out in regular traffic. Also they told me what specific route I had to take for the test, where I was supposed to turn, etc. And then they allowed me to walk out on the course during lunch hour so that I could go over it to prepare. Now this wasn't just helpful, I'd say it was absolutely necessary and that I could not have passed without having gone over the course like this. So take the time to do it, it will be well worth it. To be honest, I could spend a whole video giving advice about this part of the test, and maybe I will in a future video. For now, let me just say that the test is not really about driving skills, but more about following directions and demonstrating extreme caution. Also, don't get discouraged if you have to take the driving part more than once. Most people do. What I've heard sort of unofficially is that a person needs to take the test an average of four to five times before they actually pass. Luckily, I passed on the first try. Uh, of course, I'd love to say that it's because I'm such a capable driver, but to be fair and to be honest, this was mainly because I listened to the advice of the people who had taken the test before me. So if you have any advice, please put it down in the comments so that others can benefit. Now, I did a video recently about using an international driver's license. Uh, you can check that out in the link above. An international driver's license is fairly easy to obtain, but just note that Japan will only recognize it for one year, even if it says it's good for longer. 
So if you need to drive more than a year, you'll have to go through the process of getting a regular license because the fines and penalties can be pretty heavy if you don't. So just be aware. Finally, if you never obtained a driver's license in your home country, then you'll need to start from scratch and go to a driving school. Again, that's probably a good topic for a different video. Okay, so that's getting a Japanese driver's license. I've heard a lot of stories about different people having different experiences, both good and bad. So if you have a story, or again, if you have any more advice to add, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.